wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about LA Gauge, how you guys got started, some of the machines and, and some of the growth that you've gone through over the years. We have been in this industry since the 1950s. Uh, and it's not just been in beryllium machining, but I would broaden our expertise to include any kind of ultra precision manufacturing. So anything less than optics or electronics, we're able to do it. We, do, we hold the tightest of tolerances, and I would just say beryllium is the perfect material to showcase our skills. It's the perfect canvas for our, to showcase our artistic abilities. And so what we've really focused on here is our ability to produce uh, very complex designs for some of the most sophisticated companies and government laboratories on the planet. And our, our customers come to us to say, basically, we have a very complex system. We don't think anyone else can do it. We need to bring this design to life. LA Gauge, can you help us? And we lock arms with our customers and make sure that we look at the producibility requirements and then produce a result that satisfies not only their needs, but their customer needs and their country's needs in, in many situations. Uh, very well said, Joe. So let's talk about that precision like you spoke about briefly, right? Mm -hmm. We're standing in front of a Mitsui Siki here. So it's obvious to me, precision matters. But you also brought up how beryllium helps you showcase that. Can you talk a little bit about beryllium itself? I'm not sure everyone is familiar with beryllium. So let's talk about how does beryllium showcase that precision in your talents? What is this thing made of? Beryllium is one of the craziest materials that I have ever seen uh, in real life that's not in some pretty case in a laboratory <laughs> somewhere. Uh, beryllium, as everyone knows, is the fourth uh, element on the periodic table. Uh, and it actually comes out of the ground as a ore. Uh, they, uh, the material supplier mines this stuff out of mines in Utah. Then they ship this ore and process it in, over in Ohio. Uh, and turn it into pebbles, and then turn it into basically powder. Wow. So when they take this beryllium powder uh, and take adhesives, they put it in a crazy system that we call hot isostatic press, and they form a billet or a block. So they take this powder and create a block, and if you, if you look at it from afar, it looks no different than stainless steel or titanium nothing crazy about it but if you look a little bit closer and even if you rub your finger on it you're going to notice this thing is actually just dust wow and so on one hand it's extremely complicated because when we're taking these these machines and machining beryllium we're essentially machining powder right but your question is why would we do that what makes beryllium so great that we would go through the pains of machining powder well, beryllium has incredible, incredible properties uh, that we just can't find anywhere else. Beryllium, first and foremost, has a very low coefficient of thermal expansion. And what I mean by that is it doesn't move. No matter how hot it is or how cold it is, that thing does not move. So that's what makes it a perfect material to showcase our ability to hold very tight tolerances when we're machining with such CNC's such as this Mitsui Siki. The biggest reason we would want to be constantly using beryllium is to achieve very tight tolerances and make sure those tolerances are kept no matter where this material is being used, whether it's deep space, whether it's with our fighter jets uh, in, in areas of war, uh, or even nuclear fusion reactors where it could get eight times hotter than the sun inside a torus. No matter the use, we want to make sure that whatever we've machined is functional and doing exactly what we want it to do. Beryllium is the perfect material to showcase that. But there are many other properties as well. That's just, we're just getting started. So the next thing that makes it particularly attractive to our aerospace customers, so it is extremely lightweight. Uh, if you compare it to aluminum, it's about two-thirds the weight of aluminum. Uh, and you know that every pound counts when it comes to launching a jet, launching a satellite, launching the James Webb telescope, 
uh, or launching a shuttle that's going either to the space station or even the moon or even Mars. Every little bit counts and beryllium is the perfect material to, to make sure you are keeping within your weight requirements. Uh, the, other, the other element that makes beryllium so powerful in the field is its strong tinsel strength. Uh, it, so you combine being lightweight, strong tinsel strength, and holding the form that you have designed in your computer I mean, this is a recipe for success in the field, and that's exactly what we're looking for for our customers. So we encourage the use of beryllium whenever possible. Wow, that sounds absolutely amazing and fascinating at the same time. You've already hit on it once. You're talking about lightweight. You're talking about to be able to, you know, go from such a broad range of temperatures, and you're talking about how sturdy or strong it is. In doing so, it probably comes with some complications in machining as well, right? Ah, uh, you have no idea. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That's what makes the, this business so interesting. Uh, and that's why so, many, the, so few players are willing to get into it. It is tough material to machine. First off, you're machining powder. You know, if you were to take one of these machines and put in aluminum or stainless steel and you start cutting, you'll notice that there is material just kind of spiraling out right and falling to falling off piece by piece not with beryllium with beryllium you start cutting and all you're seeing is powder just falling off that that makes for an incredibly delicate situation in order to save the part let's remember beryllium might be useful functional and the best material to use but it is not cheap beryllium can cost anywhere between 1800 to 2000 to 2500 dollars a pound. So anytime we're handling this kind of material, we want to be delicate. We want to make sure we know exactly what we're doing. And even with that, we're machining powder. So that's the first complication. Well, with that price point, I'm glad it's light. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it does what it needs to do, but it'll cost you. Right. Uh, the second thing that's incredibly difficult when it comes to beryllium is because it's powder, any kind of chipping and any kind of issue with the base material can end up cracking up just one area of the part and that crack can propagate very quickly throughout the entire part without you even knowing it. Any of those micro cracks could mean an end to the entire product. When would you find that out? Let's say you had that micro crack and you've compared it to me before, like going through a windshield in a car, right? When would you find out? When, the, when it's already finished? Sometimes that's exactly when you'll find out. And, but what we do, and this is part of our secret sauce, this is part of our approach, is we make sure we have enough inspection points and the expertise to identify what kind of micro cracks, what they look like, and what kind are dangerous to the part versus what kind can be kind of taken out in a proprietary approach we have. So it's really delicate and it just takes a lot of experience and a good eye. And if there's one thing, if there's one thing our inspectors and our machinists have here, it's good eyes. But there's another part about machining beryllium that we have to be aware of at all times, which makes it extremely difficult. And that's that beryllium is actually toxic. Uh, it is a, element that even though you could sit and eat it and you'd be safe, you'd have some other issues, uh, you cannot breathe it in. Breathing in beryllium chips, if you're sensitive to it or allergic to it, uh, could mean that those chips could give you something called beryllosis. Beryllosis is a nasty, nasty condition uh, that can lead to fatal consequences. And we take that very, very seriously here. Uh, you'll notice as we take other shots of our shop and as we walk around, you're gonna notice HEPA filters, you're gonna notice closed doors, you're gonna notice masks on all of our employees. And you're also, what you're not gonna see, but is constantly uh, in motion uh, and protecting our employees, is the negative vacuum system. All the air is moving away from our employees and making sure they're safe at all times. It is critical for us 
to make sure that we're constantly taking air samples, wipe tests, uh, and checking our HEPA filters and our vacuum systems uh, to make sure that everyone is safe here at all times because this material is no joke. It sounds to me like the air inside is cleaner than the air outside. <laughs> well, we're in LA, so it's a low bar, <laughs> but uh, we, do take our, uh, we do take pride in not only temperature controlling our, our, our factory and certain areas of our factory, but making sure it is as clean as possible. Well, you've certainly invested in some of the top machines, uh, but it doesn't start on a Mitsuisiki, and it doesn't finish on a Mitsuisiki either, does it? You have a roughing process. I believe you have what's called a lapping process as well. Are there special tools that you use as well to go along with this machining process? All of that is true, and it's all very exciting. We can stand in front of all these high-end machines all we want, but this is only half the story. It's actually probably less than half the story. Really what it comes down to at LA Gage and at any shop at our caliber are our people and our processes and our culture. So let's talk about that.